You are now listening to episode 30 of The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers the real cost of sickness. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Welcome to The Real Health Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, owner and operator of Align Utah here in Salt Lake City, but bringing to you information worldwide about real health. What can we do for real health? And when you talk about that word real health or just talk about the word health and you ask people, you know, the the silly question, what is your health worth? What is it worth to, you know, stay on this earth and continue to live your life and to be with your loved ones and doing the things that you love and going the places that you love? And, you know, what is that worth? And you always get the cliche answer, oh, it's priceless. Right. And, you know, that I mean, that makes sense because you really can't put a price tag on on everything that you can get out of life. It's it's beyond being able to add add up and being able to quantify in a dollar amount. But at the same time, you can put a price. You can put a cost on what it's what is it going to cost you to be sick and what are you going to avoid? What costs are you going to avoid by being healthy and by being well? And that's what we're going to talk about today because what we work with, you know, through chiropractic, through nutrition, through detox, through exercise, what we really work with is prevention. And there's a lot of value in prevention, an unbelievable amount of value in prevention just by avoiding the costs that you're going to incur by getting slipped into the medical system. And that's what I want to go through today. What is the true cost of chronic disease? What is the true cost of illness? What is the true real cost of not eating well, of not taking care of your spine, of not taking care of your body. You know, Time Magazine had a cover within the last, you know, couple of years, decade or so, I guess. Uh, but it said, what is the real cost of cheap food? What does it cost you in the long term to eat cheap, crappy food that leads to chronic diseases like diabetes, like heart disease, like cancer, like autoimmunity, like celiac disease? What is the real cost. And so that's exactly what I'm going to go through with you. I'm loaded with stats today. And we're just going to talk about what is it costing us personally? What is it costing our country? What does a, you know, a trip to the hospital cost? What does a chronic disease cost? What are most people paying? And how can you save by preventing and by treating your body the way that it was designed to be treated? That's what we work with in our office. That's what we teach on the Real Health Podcast is really about the way that God has designed your body to function, the way that it was naturally designed, and how you can work with that design, how you can eat foods that work with that design, real foods, how you can exercise to work with that design, how you can actually even you know take care of your spine to work with the way that the body was designed. And you can prevent a lot of this stuff from happening. So a lot of these stats we're going to go through, you know, they're big, they're powerful, they're billions and billions of dollars. And, you know, they're costing us personally millions and millions of dollars oftentimes. But what I want you to realize is that First off, that this could easily be you. At any given time, this could be you. This could be your friends. This could be your family. You're at all times one sickness away from from bankruptcy, really. Unless you're Warren Buffett, most Americans are one sickness away from, from bankruptcy, which is crazy. But the other thing that I want you to realize is that there is a lot of hope. Okay, so this is not a gloomy episode. It's not just looking at all the problems going on with our healthcare system, but there's a lot of hope. You know, I'm not too worried about these costs because I'm doing everything that I can for myself, for my wife, for my family, for my parents, for my patients, doing everything that we can to avoid these chronic diseases and avoid these costs. Okay, so let's get into what are some of the stats when it comes to just the American healthcare system. You know, and most people know that it's that it's not, you know, doing very good, but you know, what what does that look like? Well, how about some, you know, personal stats? You know, according to a report published the American Journal of Medicine, 
medical bills are the leading cause of bankruptcy. In fact, they're a, a, a major factor in more than 60% of the personal bankruptcies in the U.S. And of those that were caused by medical bills, approximately 75% of them had health insurance. Okay, so that's crazy. That's it's 3.5 million people annually. Another one, you know, Harvard study found that it was 75 percent that they caused 75 percent of bankruptcy. 3.5 million people annually, and that one found that 85 percent had health insurance. Two thirds of those people had owned their home, and three fifths had gone to college. So that's the personal cost of chronic disease or of, you know, a medical bill that can lead to bankruptcy. One study found that 41%, okay, almost half, approximately 41% of working age Americans either have medical problems or are currently paying off medical debt. So once you get into the system, you're going to stay part of of the system. It's really hard to get out of the system. So we want to teach prevention and avoiding getting into that system. And one thing that I'll say too, you know, while we're still close to the beginning is we always mention, you know, we're not anti-doctor, we're not anti-medicine. If I get hit by a car tonight, thank God for the medical system. Thank God for the ambulance. Thank God for the hospital. Thank God for the surgery. Thank God for the painkillers. Thank God for saving my life right? But we're talking about the overuse of medical interventions uh, and the medical system, the medical monopoly, the pharmaceutical companies that are profiting massively off of our poor well-being. Okay, so two completely different things. And I just want to clarify that right from the beginning. But 41% of us either have problems or are currently paying off medical debt. Here's another one. Uh, health insurance premiums recently, uh, between 1999 and 2009, in a decade, premiums for small employers increased 180%. So health insurance, because we keep getting sicker, it's harder and harder to get health insurance. Here's another one from the Huffington Post. And, and this is one that will really hit home. Maybe you're close to retirement. Maybe you're starting to think about it or starting to plan for it. Well, here's what the Huffington Post has said is retired couples would need $416,000 for health care costs if their drug costs were average. Okay, so if you retire at the average age, you die at the average age, your drug costs are average, you need an extra $416,000 just for your health care costs. And if you are lucky enough, fortunate enough to live longer than three quarters of retirees, so you, you, know, you live a little bit longer, you live to, to 80, to 82, the estimate rises to 614000 So that's what you need to have set aside just for your medical expenses. Those are real numbers. Those are real stats. So what can you do? You can avoid some of these costs, some of these expenses by keeping and maintaining your health. Here's a few more about the system. You know, nearly half of all Americans are now on prescription drugs. Uh, according to the CDC, approximately three quarters of a million, 750,000 people a year are rushed to emergency rooms because of adverse reactions to prescription drugs. Uh, children in the United States are three times more likely to be prescribed antidepressants than children in Europe are. Uh, here's, a, here's a big one. You know, are we getting better results with this. Okay, so it says, according to the CIA World Factbook, the United States had a higher infant mortality rate than 45 other nations in 2009. So really, what is our money going towards? The infant mortality rate in the U.S. is nearly three times as high as it is in Singapore. And our births are incredibly expensive. You know, a vaginal delivery costs approximately six grand, while a C-section costs about nine grand. That's why one of the reasons why C-sections are on the rise. And, you know, it's estimated that hospitals overcharge Americans by about $10 billion every single year. And the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is with our healthcare system, our healthcare system, if it was a country, just the healthcare system, it would be the sixth largest economy in the entire world. Okay, so this is not about really about our public health because we're not getting any healthier. We keep getting sicker. We keep forking money into chronic disease. We keep paying tons to pharmaceutical companies. You know, the top 10 highest grossing pharmaceutical companies make more than the other 490 
companies of the Fortune 500 combined. It is a huge, huge monopoly. We keep sinking money into it, and we're not getting any healthier. So what about chronic disease? Those are the ones that are riddling the most people. Those are the ones that are causing the most deaths, the ones that are costing the most money. And they're, they're affecting about 130 million Americans right now, which is about 40% of the population of the country. So these are chronic diseases. Uh, it's a disease that lasts three months or longer. Uh, about 40 million Americans are limited in their activities of daily living due to one or more health condition. Okay, so it's 40% of the country. Uh, by 2020, that number is projected to grow to an estimated 157 million, with 81 million people having multiple conditions. Okay, but it's about half of all adults have a chronic condition. And here's the, the horrible part is it's about 8% of children age 5 to 17 are reported to have limited activities due to at least one chronic disease or disability. So it's a, and it's a third of the total population now living with multiple chronic conditions. So not just one illness like diabetes or heart disease or depression, but with two or more. Okay, and so when you look at the stats, a 7 out of 10 of our deaths are due to chronic disease. Heart disease, cancer, and stroke account for more than half of all the deaths each year. Uh, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, people with chronic conditions receive only about 56% of the recommended preventative healthcare services. So what's it costing? What's the, what's the impact? Uh, more than 75% of our healthcare costs are due to chronic conditions. You know, we spend close to $3 trillion, with a T, dollars, 2.7 at least trillion dollars a year on healthcare costs, and more than 75% of them are due to chronic conditions. Four out of the five most expensive health conditions are chronic conditions. They're heart disease, cancer, mental disorders, and pulmonary conditions, lung conditions. There's a report, that, and this is, you know, now, uh, you know, eight years ago, uh, but a report that showed that seven chronic diseases, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, heart disease, pulmonary conditions, and mental illness, they have a total impact on the economy of $1.3 trillion annually. And by the year 2023, which is, you know, so this was eight years ago, they did the study, eight years from now, this number is projected to increase to $4.2 trillion in treatment costs and lost economic output. Another study here from Gallup, a, a poll looked at, you know, well-being. So not necessarily just chronic disease, but, you know, overall well-being. You know, we talk about that a lot in the office with stress reduction, with balance, with time management, uh, overall well-being. We don't just necessarily want to be disease-free or symptom-free. We want to have an overall well-being. And so this poll, this Gallup poll, pulled people in five, five dimensions, okay? So career, social, financial, physical, and community. And they rated people whether or not they were thriving in those areas or not. And what they found was that the annual cost of disease burden for the people who weren't thriving, for people who didn't have well-being, for people who didn't have balance, was close to, was a little bit over $7,000 per year. Okay, so that's the average expenditure that people were spending towards their health care. But the, the, the contrast was that people who had thriving well-being in all five dimensions, the cost was under three grand. It was a 60% difference in cost and what their out-of-pocket expenses were towards their health care for having thriving well-being in all these areas. So it's not just about avoiding heart disease, avoiding cancer, avoiding diabetes. It's about really living life to the fullest, having a thriving career, being you know, and, and being just happy and being satisfied, I should say, with your career, with your relationships, with your friends, with your community, with your body, uh, with everything, with your spirituality. You know, just having thriving well-being can save you over sixty percent per year on your health care costs. So that's what it could save you by having thriving well-being is 60% a year. So what does it cost 
for prevention. You know, it's not free oftentimes, you know, and we hear a lot of times, you know, when you're switching over your food, when you're starting to make different choices, you know, you're looking at the cost. And when you're at the grocery store, we always tell our patients this, when you're at the grocery store and you're looking at two different meats, maybe a, a grass-fed organic meat that's eight ninety nine a pound on the right, and maybe a conventional ground beef that you've eaten your whole life for four, $4 a pound on the left. It is really hard to wrap your head around paying the additional price for healthy food. Would we, and hopefully everybody would agree with that. It is hard. It is a mindset shift that has to take place on what is the cost and what is the value of eating the world's best superfoods. We have a values inversion in our country. You know, we'd rather spend our money on Super Bowl parties and on new shoes and on cars and on iPhones and on everything else, all the junk, we'd rather spend our money on all that than we would on food. And actually, I just read a study recently that said that, you know, today we spend about 7 to 9% of our disposable income on our groceries and on our food. And they looked back and in, in like the 50s or 60s, it was more like 20%. And in the 20s or 30s, it was more like 30%. So we spend considerably less money towards our food today than we used to. But, you know, what does it cost? Well, they, you know, they actually looked at, they looked at, you know, what does it cost to eat healthier? And they looked at, you know, this is a generalization, but they did a big study and they looked at people who eat healthier than people who don't. And they looked at the cost difference. And what they found was that it averaged out to be about $1.50 a day. Okay, a dollar fifty a day. So it is more expensive. That's five hundred and fifty dollars a year. Okay, so five hundred and fifty dollars a year to eat healthier. But you know, we just looked at, you know, saving sixty percent on your overall well being. And I'm gonna throw out another study here that looks at, you know, cold hard numbers of what you're gonna save. And, and there's no guarantees that by eating healthy that you're gonna avoid heart disease, but there's a pretty good chance, your chances increase dramatically, that you're going to prevent heart disease, atherosclerosis, or at least prolong it quite a long time by eating healthy. You can even reverse it. Depending on where you're at, you know, I can't throw too much out there to you. But, you know, this is a preventable and a reversible disease. Well, here's what they found. is a recent study published in the Circulation which is the Journal of the American Heart Association, and it looked at the direct costs, okay, the, in, the hospitalizations, the pharmaceutical drugs, uh, things like that, and the indirect costs, the lost productivity, your time away from work, uh, things like that for coronary artery disease. So, you know, if you tuned in a couple weeks ago, we talked about heart disease. Coronary artery disease is the most common form of heart disease. So they looked at what are the costs, the direct and the indirect costs. This study found that on average, the lifetime costs associated with severe coronary artery disease ranged from $1.001493, million basically, to, you know, another million dollars. It's a $50,000 range here, a million to a million and 50,000. But it was basically that it costs an average of a million dollars for coronary artery disease. Okay, so we already talked about, you know, the personal costs that you need to have. The average couple needs to have $416,000 saved for their health care costs if they're average, and that rises to $614,000 if you live longer, right? So that's the cold, hard facts. Coronary artery disease costs a million dollars, severe coronary artery disease. The average lifetime cost of less severe coronary artery disease reached a, a discount of $767,000. $767,000 is what the cost of this one chronic disease is that is the most prevalent one in our country that is killing the most people that is preventable and reversible. 
So when you look at a dollar fifty a day, you look at five hundred and fifty dollars a year. It is such a drop in the bucket. It's almost comical when you really sit down and you crunch these numbers. Somebody that's really analytical that could really crunch these numbers and really show you what you're saving by paying five hundred and fifty extra dollars a year, by paying you know for a gym membership, by investing into supplements, by investing into yourself, into your body, into maybe some counseling, into some stress management, into a vacation. Honestly, you are investing in that. And the difference between a cost and an investment, in my opinion, is that an investment is something that you expect a return on. Okay, so when I say that you're investing in a vacation, Maybe that's decreasing your stress. Maybe by decreasing your stress, it's lowering your cholesterol, lowering your blood pressure, helping your body reset itself, lowering your stress, letting your adrenal glands catch up, letting your thyroid get back to functioning normal, giving your gut a break from inflammation, giving your brain and your mind a break. You know, that there's an investment there that you're going to get a return on. And the return might not come in the form of, you know, a check written to you, but it might come in the form of savings. It might come in the form of avoiding this million dollar cost for severe coronary artery disease. It might come in the, the, the form of avoiding some of the costs that you're going to need for healthcare. You know, imagine if you could save 20% on your healthcare costs. So you're saving 20% on your healthcare costs and say that you're doing this, you know, through prevention. So you look at that study that we went through, $614,000 that you would need for healthcare costs, average retired couple that, that lives a little bit longer. Because if you're, if you're living this way, you know, there's no guarantees once again, but it's a good assumption that you're, you're going to live a little bit longer than the average couple. So say you can cut your costs by 20%. That's a savings of $123,000. Okay, that's real cold, hard dollars in your bank account that aren't going towards the medical monopoly. Think about how many cruises that could buy. Think about how many beach trips that could buy. Think about how much, you know, just vacations and time with your family and gifts for your grandkids and your great grandkids and, you know, all those joys of life. You know, life isn't about money, but uh, it's sure not that fun to be broke and to be spending all your money towards healthcare costs. So think about what you could do with that. You know, and another study that I love that shows that, you know, adults 65 and older, Okay, so senior citizens, so about retirement age, that have been under chiropractic care. I'll put this study in the show notes. That have been under chiropractic care. You know, it shows a lot of different things. 85% fewer pharmaceutical costs, 60% fewer hospital admissions. But one of the biggest things it shows is that they spent an average of one-third what the, what the typical 65 and over patient spent. Somebody that had been under chiropractic care for over five years, maintenance chiropractic care, spent one third the less money. So when you look at $614,000, if you spend a third of that, if you have two thirds of the spending and one third of the savings, you are going to save by going to a chiropractor, and I'm extrapolating this a little bit, of course, but you're going to save $185,000. So if you think about it that way, it's massive. You know, save 10% on your long-term healthcare costs, 61 grand, between four, 40 grand and 60 grand, depending on how long you live, that's if your healthcare costs are average. So the cost of chronic disease is astronomical. It's bankrupting people. It is causing, you know, mass problems. It's causing divorce is a leading cause, you know, financial costs and medical bills, one of the leading causes of stress and divorce. And not only that, not only the financial costs, but it's killing people. You know, we rank 51st in the world in life expectancy. 
it's killing people fast. So not only financially, what are you saving by staying out of this system, but you look into the, you know, the priceless, the intangibles, the time spent with your family, the ability to do things that you love with your grandkids, your great grandkids, still golfing, still skiing, still traveling, being able to enjoy your retirement, being able to enjoy the $180,000 that you're going to save by eating well, by seeing a chiropractor, by maybe doing some lab testing, taking the right supplements. Remember that when you're investing in your health now, the younger you are, the bigger the return's going to be. It works just like compounding interest. The younger that you are, the bigger the return's going to be. But remember, the difference between a cost and an investment is an investment is something that you expect a return on. So invest in your health today. Start today. Start investing. Start stashing cash away into this investment fund called your health. It's going to get better returns than any stock, any fund, any bond ever will give you. Okay, so stay tuned. Next week, we're going to continue talking about this topic of value of prevention and the cost of sickness and disease. As always, this is your host, Dr. Taylor Crick with The Real Health Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, giving a rating on iTunes. Subscribe to our blog at www.wealignutah.com. Check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and stay tuned next week as we bring you another episode teaching the principles of real health. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.